Coming up, Fargo police join a SWAT team in executing a high-risk search warrant, the latest on the investigation. A new crackdown on noise in downtown Fargo. And a wastewater spill in North Dakota turns out to be much bigger than earlier estimates. Hello and welcome to the Nightly Review. I'm Tom Tucker. We begin with a look at tonight's headlines, then a conversation with a Minnesota entrepreneur who's looking to make his mark selling tiny electric cars. Tom Skane is the CEO of Opus Motor Car Company. Skane will tell us why he thinks his Opus number no. three can be a difference maker when it comes to low cost transportation close to home. But first tonight, a high-risk search warrant was executed in South Fargo this morning. Police say they were joined by the Red River Valley SWAT team in executing the warrant around 640 at the Arrows apartment complex off 6th Avenue South. Authorities say one person was detained but not arrested. A flash sound diversionary device was used during entry. The incident remains under investigation. A city spokesperson says Fargo Mayor Tim Mahoney has tested positive for COVID-19. Officials say Mahoney tested positive late Friday and is experiencing serious symptoms with a fever and a sore throat. Mahoney says he's taking an antiviral medication and is now doing well. The mayor continues to conduct city business by phone and virtual meetings. A change in the noise ordinance for the city of Fargo. Permits are no longer required for street performers, but they can only use amplified sound between the hours of 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., including weekends. Those violating the ordinance could face a $100 fine. City leaders say the amendment doesn't apply to push cart owners unless they use amplified sound. A man has died after being found unresponsive in a hot tub at a Fargo hotel. Emergency crews responded to the 4400 block of 19th Avenue South Monday morning where they found the unresponsive 59-year-old. Paramedics attempted life-saving measures but were unsuccessful. Authorities believe the man died from natural causes. The Grand Forks International Airport is temporarily closed to commercial flights. Crews are working 24-hour shifts to complete repairs on the runway intersection. We're told work on the intersection does not leave enough runway space to allow larger commercial planes to land. The work is set to be completed by the end of next week, allowing those commercial flights to resume. A Moorhead native is being recognized for his role in evacuating the U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan. Benjamin Dill recently received the U.S. State Department's award for heroism for his actions at Kabul's airport as it was under siege. We're told Dill worked with embassy staff to get all 800 employees and their families out of the country as the Taliban advanced on their position. Some embassy contract staff remain in Afghanistan and are believed to be at risk because of their connection to the embassy. North Dakota State Auditor Josh Gallion says the recent findings involving the Department of Human Services response times and following up on children in reported abusive situations is deeply concerning. This is the third time that we've had this similar finding in our audit reports. And so as we continue to move forward, we're trying to raise additional awareness that these are concerning issues that we definitely need to focus on. Gallion, while appearing on the flag's What's on Your Mind program, said he's working with the Department of Human Services to fix the issue. The audit revealed the required response time of 24 hours for children in abusive situations is not being met. Instead, the average response time was 13 days. The audit also shows a significant increase in calls over the past few years involving child abuse. Federal ag officials are predicting a near-record weed harvest in North Dakota. The USDA is projecting 51 bushels per acre for wheat. Farmers say they're seeing good results in their test cuts, with the best fields still to be harvested. Officials say a wet spring brought positive yields. The U.S. Drought Monitor says about a quarter of land in the state, though, has begun to turn abnormally dry. State investigators are estimating the amount of an oil field wastewater spill in northwestern North Dakota at 1.4 million gallons. The Department of Environmental Quality says the oil field owner, Hess Corporation, reported a leak of produced water on August 15th from a pipeline eight miles north of Ray. Yesterday's updated estimate for the amount of wastewater spilled far exceeds the originally reported 8,400 gallons. In Minnesota, the Department of Public Safety is set to give away free gun locks at the State Fair in St. Paul. 
DPS will be handing out 10,000 gun locks to interested fairgoers. Visitors can take more than one home. The locks will be available on a first-come, first-served basis at booths operated by DPS and the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. Well, the Nightly Review has given away two free rounds of golf at Edgewood and Rose Creek in Fargo. To have a chance at winning, all you have to do is be among the next 20 people to subscribe and comment below. We'll draw and announce the winner once we hit 160 subscribers. Thanks for your support. A very pleasant day for us to enjoy weather-wise across the Red River Valley. However, slightly cooler conditions are on the way. Meteorologist Justin Storm has a look at the forecast from the Skywatch Weather Center. Thanks, Tom. As we head through the rest of this evening, mostly sunny to partly cloudy conditions are going to continue, although clouds will increase tonight and low temperatures dip into the lower and mid-60s. We'll have a slight chance for a light spotty shower tonight, but a slightly higher chance for some scattered showers on Wednesday. Otherwise, partly sunny, high temperatures in the mid and upper 70s. A few low 80s will be possible, but it will be a little breezy with a north wind gusting as high as 25. Clouds decrease Wednesday night. We'll see more sunshine returning for Thursday, although it's still going to be a little on the chillier side with high temperatures in the mid 70s. It could happen to you or someone you love. One moment, one diagnosis can change everything. Thankfully, there's a program that helps caring people uplift families through a crisis. Lend a hand up, raising financial help and hope through community benefits and online campaigns. A program that boosts generosity so gifts go further. Lend a Hand Up helps you help your neighbors. Learn more and give at lendahandup.org. Welcome back. In tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation, we hear from an entrepreneur from St. Joseph, Minnesota, who is now selling microelectric cars. Tom Skein is the CEO of Opus Motor Car Company. Their latest model, the Opus No. 3, is similar to a golf cart but with many more amenities and sells for about $7,500. I first asked Skein to talk about how he got into the microelectric car business. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, it came from a few different angles. <laughs> I, uh, my background is kind of in robotics and mobility, uh, and they have this thing called micro mobility. And basically what it is, is it's everything that is small and moves. <laughs> so it's e-bikes, scooters, hoverboards, one wheels, this entire just realm of small electric vehicles you can pick up and carry around. And it's cool because they come from a whole different space than a lot of the EVs we see on the road today. Um, they came out of RC car enthusiasts and, and drone hobbyists, uh, piecing together all of these awesome just consumer grade components and making these really impressive machines very, very affordably. Um, I found out that there was this company overseas in China that was making full size cars based off of this e-bike technology. Uh, and there had been this kind of niche community of enthusiasts that were, you know, bringing these things here, tearing them apart, diagnosing them and, and souping them up to do these crazy things. But a lot of them were running into issues with importing. Uh, people look at these things, they see four wheels, turn signals, blinkers, uh, and immediately they're like, this is a full size car. Um, customs gets involved. It's a nightmare. Uh, I wanted one. <laughs> I thought it was really cool and something I could tool around with and um, tried importing it myself. And sure enough, it was, it was a nightmare. I figured, you know, there's enough interest in these things. People are enthusiastic about it. Maybe we could just bring them here, you know, import them legally, make sure that we're on the up and up and service them and provide a little more service than some random person across the pond that's going to take your cash and not offer any support. So uh, we started off just doing that, but we found out there's basically a whole untapped market in this space. Skane says right now they're importing the vehicles from China for resale. We do some final assembly here. Right now they are largely uh, assembled overseas. Um, we do some final installation for the batteries, uh, some fit finished components, some safety components. And in the long term, uh, we are working towards developing our own domestic model. Um, we're basically starting with the drivetrain, uh, so all the electric components based on the micro, micro mobility space. We're hoping to launch 
uh, a conversion kit for classic Volkswagens by the end of this year, uh, and also eventually doing our own domestic low speed vehicle, uh, probably around, you know, sub $10,000 is what we're looking at. I asked the entrepreneur to describe the car in terms of its appearance and performance capabilities and in terms of other vehicles it might be compared to. Totally. Well, the first thing everyone says is, oh, that's a smart car, right? <laughs> They're small, uh, kind of cute. Uh, I think they stand probably about five foot six, maybe, in height when you're next to it. And I think it's about four feet wide by eight feet long. Uh, so aren't perfect dimensions. Um, but it is a full car. Uh, it has, you know, full doors uh, with power windows. We've got keyless entry, a heater, a little sunroof, <laughs> um, you know, a steel body and frame. It's, um, you know, it, it's drawing closer to a car than it is a golf cart, even though the performance is very, very much kind of in that golf cart space. Uh, deceptively large inside. Uh, I'm six foot two, 280 pounds. And, you know, I, I fit comfortably in the front seat. Somewhat uncomfortably in the back seat, but <laughs> I do fit. Um, yeah, it, it comes in white and black normally, but we can also do custom wraps. Uh, we're partnering with a company out of St. Cloud, Minnesota for that. And um, yeah, it's uh, an off-road vehicle, technically. We, we've designed it for, uh, uh, again, private communities, campgrounds, but there are some towns like our hometown, St. Joseph, uh, but also St. Paul, uh, Wyzetta, and other cities in Minnesota and elsewhere that allow you to title uh, things like ATVs and golf carts uh, with just like a permit for use in town. I'd like to thank Opus Motor Car CEO Tom Skane for joining me for tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation. The Opus 3 is charged using a standard electrical outlet and the top speed for the three-person car is 35 miles an hour, and the car can travel about 25 miles on a single charge. You can hear my entire interview with Tom Skane by checking out the story online at WDAYRadioNow.com. Well, that will do it for this Tuesday night, August 23rd, 2022. I'm Tom Tucker. Thanks for watching the Nightly Review.